Hello there guys, it's me Unstable Voltage. Welcome back to episode 6 of Hot Survive 4 as the German Reich. Haven't really got into many wars at the moment. In fact, haven't got into any wars, although I did send a couple of divisions down to help out nationalist Spain. Uh, but at the moment, we are just sort of trying to do a few things politically. We are building up our infrastructure, we are building up our tech, and we are building up our forces. We will get to go and attack some people at some point. We're just waiting for the Molotov Rippentoff Pact, because I really don't want to end up having to fight against the USSR. Certainly um, not uh, in the interim. I mean, this pact is only for two years, so it is quite possible to still end up having to fight the Soviet Union later on in the game if you do take that as an option. Um, from there, I don't really know where we want to go. Maybe we want to go for the... Um, well, maybe Army Innovations 2... And then the fate of... No, I'm going to go for the Czechoslovakia first, because I think that'll be quite easy. And then we'll probably go for army innovations. And then we might sort of try and rush down into the alliance with Italy. And then sort of head towards uh, Danzigal War. So there's radio detection done. Uh, so we're actually going to start working on computing machine here. And then in seven days when the Sean Horse class is done, we will go and work on um, the new weapons. So how's things going with production? We are working on a battleship. It's still going to take quite some time for that one to finish. But I've set it to just build a single one of them. We could probably build some more uh, naval bases, but, you know, it's not really what Germany does. Although there's no reason why we can't get the odd few sort of improved in a few places um, get a few more dockyards let's get a few more in there they will help there's the Sean horse class completed so let's go ahead and start working on um, well we'll work on improved infantry equipment first because that's offensive equipment uh, what we'll do is we'll go into production we will add a new ship and we will add, add the Sean horse class and we'll set that to infinite and we'll set two um, dockyards to it. Now, we don't have two dockyards, but once this one is finished, because we've only got it set to a single ship, it'll disappear. And you want to go to the uh, Otzer float. So let's go ahead and do that. Molotov Ripping Pact is now complete. So um, Moscow signs the pact. Brilliant. They don't have to. They can decline it. The Soviet Union has wisely agreed to sign our non-aggression pact. This means we are free to act without risk of Soviet intervention. Unfortunately, some of our friends now question Germany's commitment towards the ultimate destruction of communism. What matters with Poland and France have when matters with Poland and France have been settled, we may need to revisit this treaty, but it is a discussion for another time. So the molotov rippentoft pact. Diplomats from Germany and the Soviet Union concluded what observers are describing as a historic agreement today with the signing of the molotov rippentoft pact. Named after German Foreign Minister Joachim von Rippentoft and Soviet counterpart Vyacheslav uh, Molotov, this non-aggression pact stipulates that neither side will ally itself to nor aid an enemy of the other. Foreign diplomats warn that this treaty effectively gives Germany a free hand to wage war in Europe without having to fear Soviet intervention. That's exactly why we did it. So, do we reassert our eastern claims when we get a load of claims on Poland? Or do we go for the fate of Czechoslovakia? Or do we go for army innovations? I think we go for the Czechoslovakia one first. So let's go and start working on that. Okay, make sure we're unpaused. And of course, the more territory we take, the more resources we get, the more factories that we get, because we'll get factories that are already in states that we conquer. Doesn't really affect manpower, because your manpower, I think, only comes from... Yeah, because it's from your core population. So even if you take over sort of the whole of Europe, your manpower only really comes from your own core territories because the other stuff is occupied it's basically suppressed natives got 131 factories it's actually quite decent how are things going with construction now we've got one more um anti-aircraft gun then we're working on some more military factories let's go ahead and sort of max some of these out where we can we get lots and lots of military factories then we're going to be working on some of the um 
uh, one of these civilian factories, and then we'll go on to do a few more dockyards. We might definitely want to start working on some, some synthetic oil at some point, especially as we'll most likely end up at war uh, with the Soviets. I mean, historically, that is what is going to happen anyway. Uh, let's have a look at the training divisions, because there's quite a lot of stuff here that's already done. So you guys are all going to go into the lowlands. So let's put you on there. And we've got, um, oh, the fall of Nanjing. So China's starting to fall. Um, you are also going to join the Lowlands Front. Going to need another army again at some point. How are we going over here? Still waiting on some tanks, which is an issue. But we are going to be getting some more military factories soon. And that will certainly help out when uh, building tanks. Obviously, we want to uh, put this up to uh, the maximum amount anyway. We're actually falling a little bit behind in weapons there. France bans communism. Uh, the Edouard Daldier cabinet have... Um, I always say Daldier, it's Daladier. Uh, the Edouard Daladier cabinet have decreed the dissolution of the Parti Communiste Francais. Ever since Soviet Russia signed the non-aggression pact with Nazi Germany, there have been talks of prescribing communism in France. The decree was insti um, instated following the agreement between the two nations for the partition of Poland. Edouard Daladier took the opportunity as support for the ban and rose even leftists and to ban... To ban Rose, and even leftist papers started advocating the abolition of the Parti Communist Francais. Okay, how long have we got before this one is done? Going quite quick. Oh, there's a signal company done. That was nice and fast. Um, let us make sure we just go ahead and start working on support weapons as well then. I'm going to try and get them done nice and quickly. How are things going on with training? A couple of Panzer Divisions in there that we are currently working on. Uh, Menkuko has capitulated, so if we go and have a look down here towards China, you can see that uh, Japan, oh, stop, what, uh, uh, Japan have managed to do a naval landing down here, uh, but China seems to be holding their own, uh, at least for the most part. Interesting times ahead, I believe. Panzer Division is almost complete. What is it up to? 97%. Not going too bad at all. Again, be able to re reform the government again. I really need to work on this um, uh, air innovation so we can get uh, Ritter von Grime. And that will give us the uh, the, the minus 20% bad weather penalty. But I also want to go for army innovations. There's, there's so many things that I do actually want to get down uh, down this tree. And then we'll, we'll reassert our eastern claims... And then we'll try and ally with uh, Italy. Now, make sure. Yeah, got to befriend. Oh, requires one of the. Oh, yeah, requires either of these ones. Fate of Czechoslovakia or befriend Czechoslovakia. So that's fine. So there's no. It doesn't say that it, we, if we're at war with Poland, we can't do that. Yeah. So that should all work out quite well for us. So we've just got to wait another 35 days for that to complete. We'll increase the world tension. Most of the things that Germany does increase is the world tension. But in another two days, we'll be able to... Uh, in fact, we can do it now. So what do we want to do here? Another military high command, I suppose. Subdetection, power drop attack, defense, interception. Could be useful. Let's go for the division recovery, or do we want reduced attrition? Let's go for reduced attrition, because it's always a complete pain. It's not going to be too much of a problem for us here because our infrastructure is actually quite good. But if we start moving into other people's territories, particularly if we do start fighting in Africa and places like that. We might want to actually um, send some forces down into... Uh, I mean, we don't have any sort of land down here. So we would probably land in Italy if we were allies and we could actually have a, um, a foreign legion that we can send down here. So that might be the next army. In fact, no, the next army that we get will probably be the sort of Bel uh, the front that we deal with Belgium and Luxembourg. And then eventually we'll have to move north and deal with Denmark as well. So there's still quite a lot of things that we need to get our armies to do. Uh, this is now only 15 days away. 25 days away, so that's not too bad at all. 
we've already got most of our um, sort of cabinet full now. So things are going to work out quite well for us, I think. I'm going to say we'll be taking some of Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovakia, we'll be taking some of Poland. And we have another tank division that can be added to the Panzers. You are on the Czech front for now. We'll move you wherever you are needed. Yeah, we're just really, really short on tanks right now. That is the main problem. Uh, we should be working on some more factories. We're also a little bit... Uh, well, we were temporarily short on weapons there. Uh, let's have a look at our logistics. Infantry equipment. No, it must just be a, a temporary imbalance because we do have a 64k surplus of infantry equipment. We've only got a very small surplus of supply equipment. And we're still short 2,500 tanks. Which is a little bit of a problem. But not to worry. Um, what are we doing now? Now we're 15 days away. We're definitely getting there. Look at this. We're already up to 40 political power again. It just goes up so, so quickly. And we should certainly be using our political influence to try and sway other people. Which no doubt we will do at some point. Um, what do you have here? Is that... Um, there is some fascists there. Let's go ahead and try and get... Um, try and get fascist Switzerland. It's sort of never going to happen. But, you know, we can we can try. We'll try and get fascist Albania. Although Italy will no doubt get a claim on that. You're working on your equipment effort. Okay, fair enough. Still need to keep building up the uh, Lowlands Front, but we have got some more infantry coming in. A lot of uh, Panzer Divisions now just made it into the training uh, training army, which is fine. Of course, even doing the training is using up additional tanks, and because we've got so many tanks now in training, it's going to be using them even more quickly. However, we are actually working on the military factories now, and we'll probably want to get even more of them queued up after we've dealt with the uh, current round of military factories, uh, civilian factories and dockyards. So we'll go ahead and put some more in there. Yeah, 2,500 tanks down is not particularly great. We might have a little break from building tanks. And there we go, the fate of Czechoslovakia. The end of the Czechoslova oh, the end of Czechoslovakia is at hand. And our forces are marching into Prague at this very moment. With the surrender of the Czechoslovakian military, we have liberated vast quantities of armaments. Their tanks in particular could serve our forces well. Uh, Bowman will be annexed into Germany as a protectorate, but what should become of Slovakia? We can set them up as an autonomous puppet state under Joseph S uh, Tiso. So set up Slovakia as a puppet state. Uh, partition Czechoslovakia with Hungary. Costs us a little bit of political power. Or all of um, Czechoslovakia belongs to the Reich. Cost us 50 political power, but we've got a ton of it. Um, yeah, let's just, just have it all. German troops crossed into the Bohemian and Moravia, um, uh, and Moravia recently. Uh, ostensibly to restore order to the regions in the wake of the collapse in Czechoslovakian government. In Prague, the occupying forces announced the creation of an autonomous protectorate within the German Reich. A second protectorate centred around Slovakia was also announced in Bratislava. All of, the Czechos all of Czechoslovakia has effectively been annexed into Germany. So that's the fate of Czechoslovakia done. So now we can go for um, reassert eastern claims. Let's start working on that. So we did just spend some of our political power, but like I said, we've got tons of it, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, free military factories. Fantastic. Um, wow, we've already filled up the tank production there. Uh, so let's go ahead and get... Um, do we want to work on heavy tanks? I don't think we want to work on heavy tanks just yet. We'll try and get all the light tanks done. We'll move you up the list. Shift and click. I really wish, wish there was an easier way to do this. Because now that's gone right to the top. There we go. And of course now we're short of oil. But we can get that from the Soviets. Are we still short of something else? Mm, uh, no. It's just saying I've got insufficient resources of something. Oh, steel. Okay. Uh, Soviet Union for steel. 
Of course, even more important now that we start building more civilian factories because we're having to trade them away in order to uh, import the resources that we need. This has obviously now made our fronts a fair bit bigger and destroyed some of our fronts. We don't technically have a Czechoslovakian front now. Um, so we're going to take the Czech front, delete your orders... And you are going to have a front line across here. And then we will take the Panzers, who don't really have anything to do at the moment. And we will uh, we'll make sure all your orders are deleted. And we will give you a small front line across there, just so you can sort of drive into the middle of Poland when the time should come. How are we going on here with training? Nothing has uh, filled up yet. Insufficient resources once again. And it's oil. Please, Mr. Russia, can I has all your oil? So the reasserting Eastern claims. The Great War sees the loss of much German territory in the East with the resurrection of Poland and the transfer of Memel to Lithuania. An ultimatum shall be sent to both nations, but Poland at last will likely bow, at least will likely bow to mere words. So we're unlikely to have to um, fight Poland, but we probably will have to fight Lithuania at some point. Which shouldn't be too much of a problem here. We can move up there if we need to. If we do have to fight against Poland, we can. We've already got some forces in place. We're just starting to build up in the west so we can potentially deal with France, uh, the Netherlands and Belgium. Luxembourg won't be a problem. Obviously, there's a very good chance that uh, the United Kingdom might get involved once we go to war with France. Which is one of the reasons why I want to try and get both Italy and Spain on board if we can. And we'll be able to do that by going for the second Vienna Award. And then we'll be able to get the alliance with Italy and the alliance with Spain. We could also befriend Turkey at that point if we wanted to. Uh, we also want this alliance with the USSR. So maybe we'll actually go for that one after reassert Eastern, reasserting the Eastern claims. Certainly wouldn't be a bad thing. We don't have to technically call them into the war. So we'll go for the alliance with the USSR and we'll start working down the second Vienna reward. There's just so many nice things on this tree that I, I would really like to get. But we've got to wait for this. This is going to take another 40 days. How's the training going? There we go. Look, we've got another Panzer. So let's go and put you on your new line here. Once again, we are short of steel. It's going to come from the Soviets. So we're using quite a few of our factories now doing all of that. How are things going with the production? Oh, we've uh, finished research on the medium tank. Not necessarily sure that I'm going to go straight into building those. Uh, we are in 38 still. Uh, might be nice if we could get some of these things, but I don't think we really need them. Uh, can't get the new artillery yet. Industry, we are fine. Engineering, can't get any of those things yet. We could go for the Dysymetric Radar. Um, but I don't think we really need it. Let's just pause things up because the, I'm letting the, the timer sort of spin on now. Uh, let's go get some Air Doctrine, actually. Uh, let's go ahead and get Dive Bombing. And we finished Support Weapons now. Let's go ahead and make, get uh, Paratroopers, just in case. And uh, yeah, that'll do for now. So we will build, build some medium tanks up. I think we'll probably need a few more factories before we really get too involved in doing that. Just need to get everybody nice and friendly. Gets friendly with the Soviets. I mean, that'll it'll make the war with Poland even easier if we are friendly with the Soviets. Although I will I will pull the trigger on Poland before if we have to if we have to fight Poland, we'll do that before we actually become allied with the Soviets. That's fine though. The Soviets can't ally Poland and they cannot um, uh, uh, sort of help Poland fight against me, so I don't mind that too much. And um, I should be able to deal with Poland on my own, although they'll probably just uh, surrender anyway. Um, how are things going with Switzerland? Are we actually having some... Yeah, we are actually pushing them slowly towards fascist. It'd be funny if we could do it with Britain, wouldn't it? There's a little bit of fascism in there. Well, we might as well try it and see what happens. I mean, why not? We've got enough. Uh, we've got enough political power coming in. It'd certainly be interesting if it if it 
does anything useful. So how are things going now with reasserting the Eastern Claims? We're only 20 days out on that one. Very, very good. And we'll be able to start getting some other people into Axis. Italy will almost certainly join uh, quite easily because of the uh, event. Now, I don't think you ever get the Soviet Union. You can ally with the Soviet Union, but they won't be in the same faction because they're always going to be part of the common turn. Uh, uh, yeah, they're part of the common turn. So there was actually a f uh, faction map mode somewhere. Factions map mode. So yeah, so they're the common turn. We're Axis. Then you've got the Allies, which includes Canada, but oddly enough, not the United States at this point. The Chinese United Front. I'm sure things will work out perfectly fine for everyone. So we're already in August of 38, so we're not too far away from 39, where we'll be able to start working on some new tech. Need more steel. There's support weapons too completed. So we should go in and find something else to work on. Soon be able to work on the new weapons. Um, not in 40s yet. Not bothered about any of those. We could work on some more ships. There's still a lot of 1936 ships that we don't have. Um, we could get the better carrier. Let's, we haven't built any yet, but let's start working through carriers. Either way, that's probably a good place to end the video. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope you are still enjoying Hearts of Iron 4. I'll see you on the next video. And until then, goodbye for now.